Well, hey guys, today's video, I wanted to focus on something that is aging your skin, which you may not be aware of, and that is loss of lipids. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. Many of you guys have a keen awareness of the fact that with age, we lose collagen in the deeper layers of our skin. And this is why we get wrinkles and people are really focused on how to improve collagen, how to delay loss of collagen from the skin. I mean, go into any store and you're gonna see collagen supplements, collagen creams, etc. But one thing that people are neglecting to pay attention to is that we also lose lipids with age. We, our body doesn't produce lipids in the skin as readily, and that actually is a major reason for the visible signs of photoaging, which you may be neglecting. What are lipids? They're large molecules that are, they don't, they don't mix with water, and they are a major part of cell membranes. Um, lipids in general include things like animal fats, plant oils, hormones, uh, certain vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K, those are the uh, fatty, fat-soluble vitamins. Lipids are really important for cellular function. They are about 50% of cell membranes, and without good lipids, cells become leaky, they lose their integrity, and they start losing vitamins, minerals. But lipids also play a major role in signaling uh, within the cell membrane. So they're, they play a, a vital role in communication. Our skin has its own natural fats, its own natural lipids, things like ceramides and cholesterol, fatty acids. These are really important for skin barrier function. Um, they play a vital role in keeping moisture within the skin and allowing for exclusion of impurities, irritants, and um, infectious organisms. Cholesterol is a really important lipid in our skin. It accelerates skin barrier recovery and it plays a vital role in the elasticity of our skin. With age, we start making less cholesterol in our skin and that leads to less elasticity and the visible signs of dry skin. We're more prone to irritation and we also are more prone to symptoms of stinging, burning. These are manifestations of sensitive skin, but the root issue here is loss of lipids in the moisture barrier, allowing for more irritating things to get in. Cholesterol is important for keeping our skin plump, bouncy, and hydrated. As we start losing cholesterol in our skin, we start in around our 30s and 40s, noticing some of the visible signs of skin aging related to cholesterol deficiency. Dry skin, skin that's more readily irritated, more prone to redness, peeling, and symptoms of sensitivity. And as cholesterol production declines in the skin, our skin is much more vulnerable to damage from reactive oxygen species from environmental stressors further contributing to breakdown and weakening of the skin barrier and the visible signs of photoaging. This also translates to collagen that is more easily destroyed in the deeper layers of the skin. You've got to have that healthy uh, moisture barrier intact and those lipids play a vital role. Beyond cholesterol, you're probably familiar with the other type of lipid in the skin barrier, ceramides. These two are really important for maintaining the integrity of the moisture barrier, keeping those irritating things out and a major under underlying cause of dry skin is a deficiency in ceramides. Some people are born with problems with ceramide levels in the skin and they are prone to eczema. Uh, also with age we start making fewer ceramides and we're more prone to dryness and water loss from the skin. Oh my god that's all so terrifying right? Well there are many things that you can do proactively to help your moisture barrier and to keep your skin healthy and functioning properly. First of all, applying cholesterol topically actually can help strengthen your skin's moisture barrier. Cholesterol is actually found in many moisturizers and applying cholesterol topically can help with moisture retention. Also applying ceramides topically from a moisturizer too can help in improving moisture retention. Simply using a moisturizer though can help the function of your moisture barrier as we start making fewer lipids with time, it becomes even more important. Moisturizers applied to the skin, regardless of if they have cholesterol and ceramides, help to seal in moisture and allow your skin's moisture barrier to function better, to recover better, 
and to keep you protected, to keep irritating things out. Using a moisturizer is so important to the health of your skin, especially as we get into our wiser years and we're making less cholesterol in the skin and less ceramides in the skin and we're more prone to more prone to that irritation. So while everyone is focused on collagen and the deeper layers of the skin, don't forget the importance of the lipids up top to seal everything in and keep the fluidity and integrity of the moisture barrier. This is really important because uh, an intact moisture barrier is better equipped for protecting you from those environmental stressors that ultimately destroy that collagen. Uh, an intact moisture barrier keeps irritating things out like pollutants and um, you know potentially infectious organisms like fungus, for example, or bacterial infections. An intact moisture barrier also allows you to tolerate other topical medications or ingredients better. So obviously applying a moisturizer is really important. Now, one thing, it's not a Dr. Dre video without emphasizing this, and that is wearing sunscreen is also another really important part of addressing this issue of your moisture barrier. Why? Well, one thing most people don't realize is that the majority of sunscreens will help to some extent with improving moisture retention in the skin. They're going to have ingredients that help seal water in. They may not be the optimal moisturizer, meaning they may not have necessarily ingredients that really bind on to water in the top layer and, and you know amp up hydration in the top layers of the skin, but ultimately they do reduce water loss from the skin. Uh, but importantly, they block out some of the damaging rays from the sun that ultimately destroy your collagen down in the deep layers, but also impair the integrity of the moisture barrier by damaging the lipids in the top layer of the skin. So the sunscreen piece is really important. Beyond just wearing sunscreen though, obviously protecting your skin from the sun by wearing sun protective clothing is also really important. Protecting your skin from ultraviolet radiation is definitely something you need to factor in when considering how to optimally protect your moisture barrier because ultraviolet radiation, you know, we always think of it as like destroying collagen down on the deeper layers of the skin, but up top, it creates a lot of havoc, generates free radicals, damages DNA and our skin cells. I mean, there's a lot going on, including damage to lipids in the, in the cell membranes and ultimately contributing to signs of dryness and irritation. Have you ever noticed, if you happen to be unfortunate enough to sustain a sunburn, that the skin is not exactly glowing and hydrated? Likewise, if you are somebody who thinks tanning is a good idea, which it's not, tanning by the way is a sign of skin injury. If you if you suntan, if you if you go out and get a suntan, have you ever noticed that the skin is it's not glowy and bouncy? Everyone thinks that tan skin somehow portends health, but it actually doesn't. I mean, it's a wounded barrier and it's more prone to losing water because you've kind of, you know, you've destroyed some of the natural lipid um, integrity there and you're losing more water. So, you know, it wouldn't be one of my videos without the emphasis on the sun protection. I mean, it is a major, it is a major thing that you can proactively control uh, to reduce damage to your skin that not only contributes to aging, but impairs the integrity of your skin. Remember you guys, it's more than just cosmetics when it comes to skin. It's the largest organ. It has a vital role in keeping you healthy. And so that really should, that really should be the priority. And you know, a side effect is better looking skin uh, cosmetically, but the goal should be health. Um, as we start making fewer ceramides, less cholesterol in the skin, uh, our skin is more prone to dryness from cleansing. Selecting a gentle cleanser to remove dirt and impurities at the end of the day, really important. But you don't wanna over cleanse your skin. You don't wanna use extremes of temperature. I mean, you're already losing some of the lipids with time. Why strip them away with harsh cleansers, hot water, cleansing too frequently? Keeping your skincare routine really simple, I always advocate for that. And especially as we get in our wiser years, we're making less uh, cholesterol in the skin, fewer ceramides, the skin is going to be more prone to irritation from things that come in contact with the skin. And those things that come in contact with the skin that are more likely to cause irritation, they subsequently can actually further impair your moisture barrier by disrupting the pH of the moisture barrier and things like that. So keeping it simple is just always your best bet, in my opinion. 
So skincare products, they can only do so much, but the moisturizer piece and the sun protection piece of your skincare routine are going to help out your cause the most. Now, uh, obviously, as I said, skincare products can do everything. What about your diet? That always is a major factor in really anything when it comes to health, including the health of your skin. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have a diet that includes some healthy fat sources. Now, I want to make one clarification. When we're talking about cholesterol in the skin, that is not the same as dietary cholesterol. Uh, it's not the same as like HDL and LDL and you know plaques in the arteries and cardiovascular disease. So it's not like that. It's not like eating, like you shouldn't go out and eat like Big Macs in an effort to get better looking skin. That's not what I'm talking about. But, um, uh, there are some foods in your diet that can help out the lipid cause in your skin. Foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, walnuts, chia seeds, black seeds, fatty fish, avocado. Incorporating these into your diet is going to help with that lipid piece of your skin and help the moisture barrier downstream. Uh, these foods also help with uh, the skin's ability to handle free radical damage better. You know, there are some supplements too that kind of show promise. I, I say kind of because the data with supplements is always, you know, it always has limitations. But specifically, um, evening primrose oil and borage seed oil supplements, rich in fatty acids, these have the potential actually to improve the moisture barrier. Uh, what about dietary ceramide supplements? I have a video talking about these and there is some evidence that they can help in improving moisture content in the skin, but the data with the ceramide supplements is a lot more limited. Check in the description box. I'm gonna list my favorite ceramide containing moisturizers down below that are really good. But again, I wanna emphasize that using really any moisturizer can help with the integrity of the moisture barrier and ultimately help downstream in terms of recovery of the skin barrier and your skin's ability to better handle free radicals. I'm also going to list some of my favorite sunscreens. I'll also list some very gentle cleansers. But I wanna to emphasize to you guys that the tips in this video and the information that I'm giving you, it's not about a cosmetic outcome. It is about preserving function. Uh, keeping your skin as healthy as possible so that in your wiser years, it's less likely to be prone to dryness, irritation, and you know, a side effect of better moisturized skin is it looks better. The skin cells are more hydrated, they're plumper, they're, you know, when they're hydrated, they kind of help in smoothing out those little fine wrinkles. Um, and so there is a cosmetic benefit there, but the focus really should be on function, preserving function and integrity of the moisture barrier. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys and kind of calling to light the importance of lipids in the skin. Uh, you know, it's not just about collagen boosting and, tr and trying to, stay on top of collagen and you know eating certain foods that will help with collagen preservation etc it is also about that top layer piece that remember you know is really keeping everything uh everything irritating out and everything good in <laughs> i hope this video was helpful to you guys if you liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye